sometimes raucous State of the Union address from President Joe Biden, followed by road trips by both the President and Vice President Kamala Harris to sell the administration's accomplishment and preview the months ahead. Joining me now is Chuck Todd, moderator of NBC's Meet the Press. Chuck, I am sure that you'll have plenty of State of the Union talk Sunday when you welcome the governors of Utah and New Jersey. Here in Atlanta, we saw Vice President Harris this week as part of the post State of the Union blitz. So do you think uneasy Democrats feel any better now about another run for President Biden after what we saw this week? Well, I certainly, I can tell you in Washington they do. And there's sort of two different groups of Democrats when it, uh, that sort of are wringing, uh, wringing their hands. You had a group of Washington Democrats, the sort of the political uh, elite of the Democratic side of the aisle, wringing their hands for a while. And from the midterms to this point in the State of the Union, I do think he's won over the insider crowd. You don't hear any chatter of, oh, maybe he shouldn't, maybe he should do this. Um, that's gone. But the voters are in a different place, and we haven't seen any post-State of the Union polling. Look, I certainly think he was more vigorous in the State of the Union than I expected. I think a lot of, I think that moment on Social Security is turning into, have been a, a good moment for him. So I certainly think it, it, it should stop, um, it certainly should stop the slow erosion he was having among voters who thought, who were starting to question whether he was up to this job still. Uh, look, that, that was a huge finding in our poll last month. The, the, the drop in people who think he's got the ability to do this job. Only one in four voters think it right now um, when it comes to his physical, his physical and mental uh, well-being. I gotta think his performance at the State of the Union should improve that number. And it's something I'm, I'm looking for. Again, the insider crowd has been appeased on this. The question now are rank and file voters. So on Tuesday night, some Republicans had no problem speaking out during that speech. One of the president's most prominent hecklers from yeah. Georgia, Congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Greene. It wasn't too long ago, Chuck, though, that this behavior would be shocking at a State of the Union. But now, is this just where we are with the polarization of Congress? I kind of think it is. Uh, I'm a, and perhaps I'm numb to it because I got to cover cover this circus every day. Um, but I have been astounded, and I do think that I worry that maybe those of us that cover them every day were like, yeah, of course they shouted. This is the way it works now. Um, the number of people anecdotally that I dealt with this week who aren't sort of Washington types who are like, what was that? That was rude. I didn't like it. Um, I heard a lot more. So I, you know, as much as I was sort of like, huh, I shrugged my shoulders. And, and, uh, and it certainly seemed as if even the president did, realizing that this is just a fact of life now. Social media in general, I think, has made people coarser in public. And so why shouldn't it make members of Congress coarser when they're in public, right? So I think it is sort of a societal shift. But I am struck by the number of people, particularly older uh, people that I've dealt with, who still found it very, you know, even people that don't like Biden thought her behavior was wrong. Yeah, a lot of that we we're seeing as well. Now, this week, Georgia's Secretary of State Brad Raffensperger said he would be in favor of moving up the state's presidential primary on the calendar, but not until 2028. Are Democrats, specifically President Biden here, going to have their revamped primary calendar? Are they going to get that in 2024? Um, I, I don't know. And I don't know if it's going to matter. If Biden runs for re-election, it really won't matter, right? Because he's not going to have a serious contest. Um, so uh, I find that comment by Brad Raffensperger sort of, sort of intriguing. He's like, I'll do it in 2028, just not, just not now in 2024. Um, I'm, I'm mildly surprised that Republicans haven't thought, you know, maybe the Democrats are right about Georgia and we ought to join them uh, on this one, that it's too important of a state now in national politics not to sort of get in there early and start organizing early. So... Um, you know, that I'll be honest, if I were the Democrats, I'd be working that angle with Republicans. Hey, you care about this state, too. Uh, and proving, you know, getting into the state early is good for you, too. I kind of would be pushing that angle because it might might be a better way to entice uh, Georgia Republicans to to go along with this primary calendar change. All right, Chuck, thank you so much. Remember, meet the press air Sunday morning at 10 right, right here on Thanks. 11 Alive. Chuck, thank you.